down, move more, increase energy out. All right, burn an extra 200 to 400 calories a day. Uh, studies where people have lost weight and kept it off, significant weight, a significant amount of weight and kept it off, they burned about 2,000 calories a week in exercise. So I like to put as a target, especially for young people who can do more than older people, 300 calories a day. Let that be your exercise target if you're trying to lose weight. And by the way, just as important if you're trying to keep weight off. It's not more important. Exercise is really powerful in making, typically people can lose weight but they have a hard time keeping it off. I don't want to go into why, there's some interesting reasons why. And one of the things you can do when you have lost the weight to help make sure you don't gain it back is keep that exercise. That makes a difference in real success. Um, aerobic and strengthening is the ideal combination aerobic for burning calories and conditioning your heart and lungs and strengthening for increasing your muscle mass, which might help to increase your beta metabolic rate, although that's controversial. Uh, but the truth of the matter is it doesn't matter exercise in what you love so that you'll do it. If you don't love it, you're not going to do it. So find exercise that you actually enjoy. Find a way to enjoy it. Be creative. Get with a friend. Read, watch movies while you're on machines. Hike, whatever. Just have an open mind to moving in ways that you actually enjoy. But if you enjoy it, then you'll do it. It's not punishment. It's not being in prison. Make exercise things that you actually have fun with. Um, and don't compensate, oh, don't forget general activity. If you, sit for 20, if you sit and sleep for 23 hours and you exercise for an hour, that hour exercise is great, but you've got to not be sitting so many hours in the day. So look for ways that you can move your body more. It takes a little practice, you know, put a timer on your computer so you don't sit for more than 45 minutes without getting up and walking around. Wash your car as a really car wash, take the stairs and the elevator, park further away. All these things add up. The name of the game is to increase energy out. All those little things are nothing alone, but they add up, and they could add up to an extra 200 calories in a day without actually exercising. But when you do exercise, don't compensate by eating more. Studies have shown that when people exercise subconsciously, they have another serving of this. They eat a second cookie or they eat dessert. Subconsciously, in their mind, they think, I deserve it, I did my workout. But if you're trying to lose weight, that extra whatever might take away your negative energy balance. So check in with yourself and say, no, wait a minute, why do I deserve it just because I exercise? I'm trying to be healthy and I'm trying to create an energy deficit. So maybe give yourself a smaller indulgence so that you can have a sense of enjoyment without the extra calories. Exercise burns calories, builds muscle, reduces depression. I mean, there's just so many ways that exercise can help people to lose weight and be healthy and keep it off and prevent heart disease and diabetes and cancer. Okay, now the third prong, address any underlying emotional issues. Not everybody has them, but many people do have issues around food, body image, and emotional eating. If you don't deal with these, they'll come back to get you. So even if you manage to find a diet and exercise program that you can do and lose weight, if you don't deal with these issues and you have them, they have a tendency to derail you down the road. Um, Bob Green is Oprah's old trainer, and his books address this a lot, and I'm pretty impressed with what he's written about it. Janine Roth has written a bunch of books on compulsive overeating that are very popular, and I think they're basically pretty good. And there's also professional help. I don't have this three, you know, the simple bullet list of how to do this. I'm not a therapist. But I do know the importance of changing your attitude. Changing your attitude about yourself and changing your attitude about food goes a long way. I'm almost done. All right, what it takes to lose weight for good. This is what I've learned from working with my students and clients in my own lifetime, my own life cycle of managing my weight. First of all, avoid fad diets and gimmicks. They, unless you're just trying to lose five pounds to go to your high school reunion, forget them. They derail you and they cause more damage than good. Change your lifestyle. If you're not ready to change, you know, you've got to weigh out my enjoyment of eating this way and living this way versus my 
desire to be thinner. The, the lifestyle that will help you to be thinner, you need to be prepared to take that lifestyle. Otherwise, you're asking the impossible. And that's what a lot of people do. They want to be thin, they want to be healthy, but they don't want to change what they're eating or what they're doing. That do, that's in fantasy land. So accept the reality that that doesn't work that way. And then find a way to make it work for you. Um, you, need to, you need to make eating a healthy diet and getting exercise a priority. It's been said if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You need to set priorities. And if losing, you know, 10 pounds in the next three months is your goal, then make it a priority. Healthy food doesn't just magically appear in front of you when you're hungry. You gotta make it there. You gotta stock your kitchen with healthy food. You gotta somehow get healthy food near you when it's time to eat when you're hungry. That takes a certain amount of effort. If you're not willing to make that effort, you're stuck with, I'm hungry, what shall I eat now? Well, what's available to me? What's available to me to eat? Not usually healthy stuff. Um, and same with exercise. You just hope that exercise happens. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You need, you need to be committed to the process. It's not enough to be committed to the goal. Just like getting an A. You can want an A, want an A, want an A, but you gotta be committed to the process of earning your A. Same thing with weight loss. You need to be committed to negative energy balance. Say, I'm going to be a negative energy balance. It doesn't have to be seven days a week. Maybe it's five days a week. It doesn't have to be forever and ever and ever. Just tell you lose the weight. But you need to be committed to that. You need to find other ways to deal with problems besides food. It can be done. Take some effort. Big payback. And you need to be patient. If you're looking at losing maybe five pounds in a month, it takes a lot. Find patience. If you get impatient, you're going to get derailed. And believe in yourself because you can't do it. The reason why so many people lose weight and, um, get, and, and don't keep it off is they went on fat diets. It's not that you can't do it. It's not that failure is, is always the thing. It's that people go about losing weight in the wrong ways. The wrong ways will come back to bite you. Okay, there's just a couple more slides. I'll let you read the last couple slides on your